I want to talk about the unions, but first I want to talk about Michelle Moon. What's going on? Well, there's a £200 million contract that was given to PPE Medpro that was recommended by uh, Baroness Moan, and that contract was an absolute waste of money, and it was through the VIP fast-track lane, which was proven to be unlawful, the way that people were given a leg up and preferential treatment. I mean, this company wasn't even formed, it wasn't even registered when um, Baroness Moan approached ministers to, to get this contract. So I want the documents to be given to the Public Accounts Committee and for that money to be accountable. I want people to see what's happened here. How do you know it was a waste of money? Because the £122 million that was um, spent on gowns, none of them could be used. £81 million on face masks that were paying over double what these companies were making them for. And other companies were producing them less than half the price. So it was an absolute waste of money. And why was that company given it? Whereas other companies that could have delivered at the time were, were not given contracts because they wasn't on this VIP fast lane. So who's your beef with? My beef is with the government for they're the res responsible and the fact that it looks like cronyism, that they've just been given their mates these contracts without any due diligence. That's why I'm calling the vote today in Parliament to get to the bottom of it. We need to see the documents and see what's happened. This is public money. But we're in the middle of a pandemic. The government was doing absolutely everything they possibly could in order to try and keep people safe. Some mistakes were going to be made. Well, I don't accept that. I don't accept that at all. In the middle of a pandemic, we had loads of British companies that are saying, I want to help, they've got uh, expertise in that area, they've done gowns before, they've done masks before, and they weren't given the opportunity to help, they were frustrated. And the only thing that they didn't have was the phone number, WhatsApp, or access to government ministers, uh, government uh, peers and others who could get them on this VIP fast track. And the due diligence clearly wasn't there because of this level of incompetence, £10 billion wasted on PP that we can't use. So is it Michelle Moan that you're upset with? Is it um, the person that she first approached, as in Michael Gove, or is it the former health secretary? I think we need to get to the bottom of exactly what's happened. I think it's a scandal of a huge proportion that we've wasted so many billions and it looks like people were getting rich on the back of what was a pandemic and I think that's really sick, actually. I think you go into public service, you're supposed to do your best for the public. This does not sound like it was the best for the public at the time. We need those documents in the open so people can see. And then I tell you who I'm more upset with on who's, who's been the one that's been making the profit and you know making money on the back of taxpayers, on the back of people's misery. We saw those pictures of care workers and NHS workers who couldn't get the right PPE at the time and yet we had companies who were desperate to try and help who had experience told no we don't need you some instances wouldn't even get back to them and we had other companies this one uh, this um, you know PPE med pro they wasn't even formed at the time when the Baroness Moan was approaching ministers saying give us a contract give us a contract you know allegedly they... well, I'm going to throw allegedly in there just to be on the safe side yeah well I mean again give us the documents if you haven't done it if you're you haven't done anything wrong then show us the transparency in this you know why are you being so evasive in terms of showing the public what their millions of pounds, £200 million were spent on. Talk to me about strikes. Um, RMT extending their strike action um, today. Um, every time I have one of your colleagues here, they say, well, we would get round the table. Well, and, and do what? Well, in Wales, we don't have industrial action. We've got industrial action in the UK at the moment, in England, on an industrial scale because this government are being incredibly militant with workers of this country who have faced an absolute pelting. And they see, like, the discussion I've just had now about the billions that they've wasted and then they're told, like it and lump it, this is what you've got to have. We've had transport ministers that wouldn't speak to the transport unions. And regardless of the strike action, you try and get on a train in the north now, these co companies are not delivering on that contract, whether it's strike days or not, they get paid. It's the public that are inconvenienced and these workers that are taking industrial action lose money every time they go on uh, strike. So even if Mick Lynch, the General RMT. Secretary of the RMT, was, you know, militant as the government wants to paint him and portray him, he has to get his workers, the, the, the union members, to agree to go out on industrial action. These people don't want to do that. I think there's a deal to be done. I think the government really do need to get their... What does you that know, deal look like? Well, you know, the negotiations are around the new working conditions, reforms that you want to bring in. The unions have said, we're up for that, we'll look at that. It's about the pay that they're being offered and the unions have said, you know, we're ready for the negotiations on that. And I think that the employers should be able to do that. They've got, you know, they're still making huge amounts of profit on the back of those contracts and they're not delivering on those contracts. Do you support the RMT striking over Christmas? 
I support workers' right to take industrial action. We have some of the most restrictive industrial action legislation in this country. I believe that if we had a Labour government now, we wouldn't be in this situation. In Wales, we've got a Labour government, we're not in this situation. When Labour was last in power, we didn't have nurses taking industrial action and we didn't have this level of disruption. It's this government that have broken the system completely and can't even get the train operators without strike to run the trains on time. Do you support the RMT taking strike action over Christmas? I think the RMT don't want to take action. I want to see that strike action avoided. I don't think anybody... Slightly dodging my question there, Well, nobody, want, nobody very, wants to see... You've been very... No, forced I am, I am that, always. So. I don't want yeah. to see industrial action because I see workers losing their pay and I see the public inconvenienced. I think there's a way of us getting around the table and stopping it, whether it's Christmas or any other time of year. If you're working, our economy in the north is suffering because our trains are not running properly and people can't get to work and businesses are really suffering as a result of that. I want to see our trains running on time and the work has been paid, uh, paid fairly and decently. And I think that there is a deal to be done to get there. What do you think about Labour politicians being on uh, the picket line? I don't have a problem with Labour politicians being on the Would picket you? line, but I'd much prefer us being in government solving the industrial action rather than, you know, placards on the picket line. I've done that. I've been a union rep. I became a politician so that I could avoid us getting in that circumstance in, in the first place. I have no problems in visiting a picket line. I never have. But I want us to... My job now, as the deputy leader of the Labour Party, is to get us into government and to promise the UK that we won't have this situation because we'll have resolved it. We'll treat workers fairly, with dignity and respect, my new deal for working people will deliver that security and will avoid us getting into this situation in the first place. You must be pleased that the government's coming around to your way of thinking about onshore wind. Well, yeah, it's, it's about time. I mean, there's a lot of hot air out of the government. If we could capture that, then we might be getting somewhere. But, you know, we've had years of no, no growth. We've had years of the problems that we faced on renewables. And this government have been well behind the curve on dealing with the issues. You know, our gas storage facilities were, uh, you know, given up in 2014. So we're at the mercy of the market and hence why we're in this situation we're in today. And you'd be very happy to have um, a wind farm near you. Oh, yeah, we've got some great fields near us. You know, we've got Saddleworth Moor, we've got, you know, Hartshead Pike. It's lovely around there. I mean, look, we've got to get real. We've got to have solutions to, uh, to become self-sufficient on our energy needs. I'm not a NIMBY. I do think we have to move forward on that. Yes, we have to look at local planning conditions and everything else, but we've seen this with housing. Again, the government are failing on housing because they're not able to deliver what is a aspiration of how we achieve what we need to do. And this sort of local, like... MPs, not on my back garden, you can have it in your back garden, you can have it over here. No, what we need is a proper plan on how we can deliver on renewables and how we can deliver on housing in the UK. Okay, um, pretty impressive behind the decks uh, at the weekend. Yeah, I didn't realise it was going to go as viral as it. Look, I had my teenage sons with me. I had to look super cool. So um, I, I did this charity event where I was DJing. Entrance set me free. Anyone did? There you go. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> giving it loud. Flip it egg. <laughs> I'm just proving that all those grannies out there, we are super cool grannies. Yeah, I, I had the boss on yesterday and he couldn't think of a song that he would uh, play. I tried and tried. He didn't have one. What do you think would be his song? Ukia's song, yeah. oh, Libertine, something like that. <laughs> <Can't>... <laughs> <laughs> I think something like the you know libertines or something like. I don't think he's a prodigy. I'm a huge prodigy fan. Right. It was a. It was from my youth. Entrance was from my youth. Right. That's kind of dance music is my my type of music. I think he's probably more indie. Yeah, I was saying football's coming home probably would work for him. Yeah, I think he'd really like that one as well, yeah. wouldn't we all? Yeah. About time. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> so, you know, Gareth Southgate, I remember when I was young, he was like, oh, no, when we lost the penalty. Yeah. Now he's, like, redeeming himself and yeah. he's, like, our hero. He's done a great job managing the team. Will and fingers France? crossed, it's coming home. Will we beat France? Um, it's going to be tough, but I think we can. And I'm in trouble with my Welsh colleagues because when... England played Welsh the other night, I was getting a bit too enthusiastic because the two strikers for England were obviously, one was from my hometown of Stockport and the yeah. other one's from Withenshaw, so I was like, Manchester, <laughs> and winding up the Welsh. So I'm, I'm, I hope that my Welsh colleagues have forgiven me and the Welsh will come behind England now and that hopefully we can win I'll on Saturday. Bring it home. Bring it, home. Bring it Lionesses did. OK. Absolutely. It's great to see you as always. Thanks Thank very you. much, Anisha. Thank you.